This is the smallest block in Minecraft. This is a triple chest that generated naturally. And these are the illegal build hacks Mojang refuses to add to the game. And hey, the YouTube scientist told me that absolutely zero people have subscribed using their elbow. So if you're up to the challenge, place your funny bone on that red button below. It's free and it helps out a ton. These wooden planks are illegal, at least according to Mojang. See, even though the devs have said that dyeable or paintable wood will never make it into the game, trying out the stained planks feature in a mod like Quark proves that there's plenty of variety. And if you ask me, all 16 of these colors still look better than jungle planks. This is a chest full of stone, and this is a full stone chest. It's confusing, I know. But while Mojang only lets us make this one chest design, the frame blocks mod not only lets us make a chest out of birch and dark oak, but also out of random blocks like obsidian and cobblestone. And if you think this chest looks cursed, let's take it one step further. Or rather, three steps further. As wild as this L-shape looks, it is possible in Minecraft history. And as Baron Dunn will show you, there was one of these triple chests that naturally generated on 2B2T. And the way this was created was by two different dungeons generating nearby each other. And nowadays, the closest we can get to this is by using a mod like Colossal Chests, which is arguably just as cursed. Why place your fences like this when we can do this instead? Well, it does offer up some extra detail, but it seems a lot less useful as a fence. I mean, what are you trying to do? Stop spiders from crawling out of a farm? I didn't think so. But if we're talking about placing blocks off the grid, then we're just getting started. With this command, it's possible to summon a permanent falling sand entity. And by changing in this NBT tag, we can make it look like any block is placed outside of the grid. And by using invisible shulker entities, we can give these new illegal blocks their own hitboxes. So they'd even behave the same way, giving us curse sites like this. Or even letting us place blocks underneath the void. And that'd be how Mr. Cat built this entire house underneath the bedrock floor. But why stop at placing illegal blocks when we could rotate them too? Using this modded wrench, we can rotate and nudge blocks off of their regular path, which, as eight sided square shows, can create some hilariously cursed builds, like turning a drip leaf into a droop leaf, or putting four flower pots into the same one block space. And really, it's only gonna take a few clicks before everything looks out of place. But that's not the only thing out of place, and I'm sure you'll quickly notice that this water isn't where it's supposed to be. Though if you play in this specific snapshot 21W03A, it is possible to place lava in the nether, put a glow lichen in it, and then it'll be left as a regular water source block. And using this, we can turn a lava lake into the obsidian that we'd need for a portal to get back to the overworld. And once we go through the portal, we'll be able to do this cursed trick as well. Now, we just saw that lava and water mixed together to make obsidian. So, why does this work? Well, by using a sneaky warped sign, we can place a water source block underneath our lava, and the lava block will treat it as if it's placed on the sign, not the water. And similarly, we can get lava underwater by using a cauldron. So, have fun burning alive in the ocean. Or how about burning alive when you can't even see the fire? Now, sure, there is fire here, but with a debug stick, we can change the way that it's facing until it's no longer rendered like normal. And in fact, we can only see the flames if we crouch down over here. They're completely invisible anywhere else. But don't put away that debug stick just yet. Since if we were to take that over to an extended piston, we can make a spiffy freestanding piston head table. And that'll all be done without using any extra redstone, which is a lot easier for me to comprehend. Now, blink and you might miss this, but by using a client side tweak like this, it's possible to instantly replace any block that we're looking at with another. And while this is possible in vanilla by pressing the left and right click buttons at the same time, this mod makes it so much faster. Furniture is the last thing Mojang wants to add to the game, and they've gone on record before to say as much. But when you download a mod like this one by Mr. Crayfish, it's clear to see that this doesn't limit creativity. And if you're giving me the chance to revamp my outdoors, indoors, and even my doors themselves, I'd gladly take this option. What if instead of slabs like this, we got this instead? And with the ability to combine slabs together, we could have a whole new set of patterns to play around with whether that's a two-tone roof or an extra particular room trim. I mean, it's already possible by using this glitch of the world border, so a proper implementation seems like a fair trade. Though if we're getting changes for slabs, then vertical slabs stand out as the fan favorite. But even though as much as people want them, Mojang has labeled these as a big no. And to quote their reasoning, they don't want any features that could inhabit the natural creativity or can already be done in other ways. Which is their decision, but it only takes one look at how different players have used mods like this to see that vertical slabs wouldn't limit creativity, but expand it. And if vertical slabs are out, then we can safely say the same for these diagonal slabs. Though these, I will admit, look a lot more cursed. But with the ability to build walls in all different directions, that does seem pretty cool. Though I'm sure coding in the hitboxes for this would be some kind of mess. And I think that's the same reason why these other sloped blocks have never made it into the game. Now, granted, a feature like this is possible in vanilla Minecraft, and Seth Blink's command blocks even prove that. 
but doing the kind of wacky diagonals and bumps that we see in the frame blocks mod, that's just a pipe dream. Though seeing a roof built like this, instead of one with stairs and slabs, it is a definite improvement. In Java, we can waterlog these blocks, but in Bedrock, we can waterlog all of these as well. And with the ability to place different redstone bits, as well as doors and beds underwater, we can make our underwater base feel a lot more like Atlantis. But on top of waterlogging our blocks, what if we could use lava instead? With the mod Towelette, we can waterlog a block with any placeable liquid, letting us take our hot tub from this into something much hotter. And honestly, having a way to use lava like this could allow for some really interesting redstone designs. And if not that, it just looked really cool for building. This block is illegal, and it has nothing to do with the block, but rather with how we placed it. See, with Nembon's carpet mod extras, we can use a dispenser to automatically place blocks for us, letting us build a house with the flick of a switch, literally. So while that might be unorthodox for now, with Nembon joining Mojang's official development team, maybe this will go from illicit to complicit in the future. This is a stone. This is a stone chunk, and this down here, that's an iota. Because with the help of the stone cutter, we can turn one stone block into progressively smaller bits, until eventually we have 262,144 stone dots just from that original stone block. And if you're wondering, yes, you do still collide with them. So good luck making your way out of that maze. Unlike logs, wooden planks only face one way, at least until you see this. Now, sure, wooden planks themselves don't have any orientation, but things like workstation blocks do. So by using lecterns or cartography tables, we can make a convincingly rotating wood pattern to mix in with our other planks. Just make sure no one looks at it from the wrong angle. Otherwise, you might just give away the facade. But that's okay, because here are a bunch more facades to make up for it. With this, it's possible to lay a fake version of a block on top of the face of one cube. And hey, the same could be done with map art if you're looking for a vanilla option. So if you want to hide your valuables chest, just disguise it with an unassuming block, you'll be just fine. Or you can make it look like you have a leaf blocks like Bedrock and Survival. But that's only scratching the surface for a prank. See, if you build a map art design over the end void, it'll be transparent and invisible item frame, which lets us make our own painted designs. So you can make stone look like Diamond Door and prank some of your greedy friends. Or take the simpler option with a mod like MC Paint and just add the design right on top of the block. At first glance, this build might not look that weird, but zoom in and you'll notice that these arches are made of curves instead of stairs. And while it's hard to imagine anything like this in the base game, getting to play around with this feature in the Architecture Craft mod does show off just how many possibilities can come from one simple curve. These are not glass blocks, but rather, with this special mod, we get to place our glass panes horizontally like so. And not only that, we can also place them at two different levels of the block, almost like a glass slab of sorts. But now you know that if you take wheat and put it into a crafting grid, you're gonna get a block of thatch? Well, that doesn't seem right. But the idea behind this quirk feature is that we can have a version of the hay bale block without that red band surrounding the center, which looks odd at first, but once you get used to it, it's a great tool for medieval builds, especially when you can craft it into stairs and slabs for a roof design. This is a beetroot, and this is a beetroot on the ground. Normally, the only way we can place food on our tables is with an item frame or an armor stand, but with this mod, we get free reign to place just about any item down as a 3D model, which can quickly help to transform your bake shop from something like this into a much more interesting design. On Bedrock, we can place blocks like this by holding down the right click, but on Java, it just doesn't work the same way, or didn't until this mod. And with the same kind of accurate block placement that we have on Bedrock, we can effortlessly build our towers without having to stop and clean up any mistakes. And if we're talking about effortless building, then this mod is quite literally perfect for that. With this, we can quickly fill up a space with blocks with just two placements. Think of it as the fill command on steroids. There's just so much more that's possible. And with a grid like this, we can have it so our builds get mirrored like so. So you'd only have to build one corner before the entire building goes up. Or if that's still too much building for you, then Lightmatica makes that a lot simpler. With this, we can import schematics as blueprints and construct them with the press of a button into a world. Or if you're just playing in survival, you can use this as a hologram and copy each part of the build block for block until you have that perfect replica. And even just using this to see how a build will look if you place it into a world, that's helpful enough, let alone all the other features. This is a functional mirror, but how is that possible? Well, through the Immersive Portals mod, we're able to build two portals like so and create a convincing mirror illusion. And even weirder, we can walk through that mirror as well, which will definitely confuse some bystanders. And with that, folks, YouTube thinks that you might like this video. So see if they're right and have a good one. All right.